Hi everybody, it's Dr. B with another episode of Toolkit Tuesday, where I share a tool from my latest book, Unflappable, How Smart People Quit Overthinking, Ditch the Drama, and Thrive at Work. This also helps in your personal life as well, so if you haven't already picked up a copy or shared it with a friend or colleague or family member, please head on over to either my website at drbridgetcooper.com or Amazon and pick up your copy and spread the message of being unflappable, because couldn't we all use a little of that? Anyway, today I want to share a tool or a part of a tool actually that's in Unflappable that has been coming up a lot with a lot of personal and professional interactions I've been having this week. And it has to do with my five-step change process. Now, Yes, any change process follows a stage progression. You might double back on some, but there are five stages in that. And please check it all out in Unflappable. But the second step is always the one that gets people caught up. Why? Because it's called acceptance. And that seems to run in contrast with how we're feeling when we're trying to change something, when something is dissatisfying or frustrating or aggravating or unpleasant to us. We want to change it. And being in acceptance seems like, why would I accept it? I want to change it, Dr. B. The problem is, is that when we don't accept things as they are, saying we got here as a natural result of all the decisions and experiences that have led up to this moment, and so is everyone else. If we don't stand in exact acceptance of the moment as it is, we end up getting caught in some other spirals that are very problematic. And that's what I've been watching with a lot of my co colleagues and clients and friends and sometimes myself even for a minute or two uh, this week. And that is that we get into judgment and shame and frustration and stress trying to get the moment that we're in to be different without actually taking action to do anything about it because we simply want it to be different. We don't like the moment as it is. We don't like that it's happening. We don't like that something happened. So we get all, all swirling in this really unsuccessful uh, bid for things to change. So what we really have to do is say, you know, we got here because it makes sense that we got here. Whatever we've experienced up to this point, or the decisions that we've made to this point, have us exactly where we are. This is what it is right now. Now that does not mean we then lay back and take whatever mistreatment or frustrating uh, actions are being hoisted upon us. We might, we might decide, you know what? It's not worth my fight. I'm going to step out of this. But if we stand in acceptance that this is what exactly the moment has brought us, it's then we can say, okay, what makes me uncomfortable about this? What do I not like about this? What control do I have to influence a different future? And then, and only then can we go and take action to begin to make changes to that. I've watched so many people this week get really like railing, like raging against the storm, you know, like screaming into the wind, like this shouldn't be this way and getting so worked up and their central nervous systems are jacked and their, you know, their, their serotonin is crashing and their, <laughs> their adrenaline is pumping and they got cortisol coursing through their veins and they're not thinking straight and they're crying or yelling or getting upset, just not using their energy toward actually doing something productive about something because they're stomping their feet that it is what it is in this moment. And guys, it just is. Whatever is happening right at this moment is happening right at this moment. Accepting that and recognizing, yep, this is what I have in front of me. Now, what am I going to do about it? And that goes back to my compassion and accountability model, also an unflappable, super helpful tool in context. Uh, but it's accepting things exactly as they are. So no further ado, head on over to my website or to Amazon, pick up a copy of Unflappable. If you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one coaching for you or a staff member or a colleague or a family member, please reach out. If you're looking for someone to come in to talk with your group about how to all live and work in an unflappable way, please reach out. I love doing those workshops and would love to share the message of Unflappable with more people. So with that, be good to yourself, be good to one another, and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.